1975 um, at a now defunct gallery in Soho and at the time I was involved in making biomorphic watercolors on large format paper like 30 by 40 inch paper um, and I was really exploring the use of color and the way the water lines would make design. I would take four of these pieces and then join them together with Dugo cement to make one large piece with, they weren't, it was, it would be like a grid, a loose grid on it. Not a loose grid, it was a grid. And um, then I would shellac them and it would make them be, like sort of strengthen the bond with the duco. So it would be like one piece of like an ambered finish painting. And I abandoned the idea because I eventually, what I really wanted to be doing with these was to have them floating in plexiglass, like in a, like a piece of plexi that would be like this thick, where they would just be floated in the plastic and be kind of sculptural. And then I moved on from there into um, exploring, working with wax. We had picked up a um, artist handbook, surprisingly enough, where they discussed the process of encaustic painting and not having the resources at the time to do it properly. I started exploring melting paraffin, straight paraffin, because I lived right off of Canal Street. It was very easy to find anything you wanted in those days on Canal Street. But the paraffin, not surprisingly, was a very bad choice. It's got a very uh, low burn, so it would smoke and make a mess and potentially catch on fire quickly. And I eventually took that exploration further and found a supplier for beeswax out in, uh, in Queens, in Massabeth, Queens, where I was buying big huge blocks of beeswax. I would get it either uh, white, amber, or brown, which still had pieces of stuff in it. It was like un unfinished. I got a big bag of Damar resin crystals. I think I still have some of that Damar, some of that, it was a big bag. You could just buy this stuff in big bags and uh, pure pigment powders, which not like today where people are buying pure pigment in little containers. You bought big pound bags of pigment. There was a place on 14th Street, Fazan and Sparrow, where you could buy big bags of pigment. I didn't know it was poisonous at the time. You know, I didn't wear a mask, but I started grinding up the Damar resin crystals and then mixing the wax in and, you know, finally started making these encaustic paintings. The next show that I had, um, I think I had the show in 75 doing the things on paper. By 76, I was really immersed in making these wax paintings, and I went to see Ivan Karp. And uh, he started helping me. I mean, that was, that was it. He recognized something that he felt was of value in that work. Um, he did tell me to hire a good photographer, get better slides, and uh, he started coming to the studio and he was tremendously encouraging to me and I really wanted to show at that gallery but he uh, the next show after that I was at a place called Semaphore which is also defunct was a, in those days in Soho and I'm trying to think when Ivan moved down there that was in the 70s when he left Castelli and came down a lot of people who were starting galleries would go see him and he had what he had was called the top drawer. Because it was anybody out there that ever dealt with him would hear that in their ears, that your work was top drawer work. And what that meant was when somebody came in and they said, I'm, I'm starting a gallery and I'm looking for a stable of artists. He had names and studio addresses that were the top drawer and I was fortunate enough to be the top drawer. So I had I would say probably the most significant solo show in 1980 or 1981 at Semaphore Gallery because it was a solo show in a beautiful new space of work that was 
much more realized than what I was doing when I first came out of school. And that was the beginning of making these like off grays, off beige paintings, uh, off white at that time that were all had these markings that read from left to right and became incorporated into my work over the next 40 years where I, that became very much a prominent feature was this aspect of writing in the surface texture.